Hi, my friends. This is Jay, and I want to welcome you to our Fall Festival for 2023. <laughs> my friend Helene over at Cabin Fever Crochet, and I want to share some of our uh, fall home decor with all of you. We you know we just have so many little knickknacks and little things and things we like to do or used to like or have used in the past and we thought it would be fun to share. So this year's theme is Welcome Home. Welcome Home. <laughs> the reason I thought that would be good for this year because home, just that one word, to me it means family. It means love. It means coming together. And that's how we feel about all of you. We want to just simply say, welcome home. <laughs> As we start this holiday season. So, let me show you my welcome home project for our Fall Festival 2023. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, my friends, let me share with you this really cute and special motif that I have been doing over the years. And uh, when we decided, you know, trying to, was trying to come up with a theme, and I thought, well, welcome home, this popped right into my head. <laughs> and so I can't wait to share it with you. So let me give you a quick overview, and we can get started, because I have a lot of information to share. But first of all, I found this pretty little coffee cup, this coffee mug. It says, it's, it's a dark brown, so I'm going to see if you can see it. It says, leaves are falling, coffee is calling. And how true is that? I like teas, but coffee is where is that? <laughs> I just can't drink it late because that cream, oh my gosh. It's got too much sugar in it. Oh. But let's sit that over there. Now let me share with you. And uh, right off the bat, welcome home. And look, what, what it could be more perfect than a little house motif. This is a cute little house motif that, oh gosh, we have been, I've been knitting this thing for years. Mainly in dishcloths at first. Okay, we had them in dishcloths. We had them in, uh, you know, little hand towels. Uh, you can put it in uh, little coasters. You could make this into your beautiful uh, blanket and, and or an afghan. And, and uh, with the stitches I'm going to share with you, it would make a beautiful gift for either one. Baby, new house, new apartment, new couple. So let me just go through real quick. This is the this is the version we're going to be working, and then I'll show you the next one. This is like a like a little hand towel, and if you notice, I put a nice textured basket weave, which is so easy and quick. You will be able to use it on a lot of other projects. Once I show you how easy, it just really is a, a five by five rib stitch. That's all, and. Uh, Here's the, like I said, the house motif. And then the next, this is what we will work in real time. And I'm going to show you where I got the stitch from, or uh, where, it's, where the stitch kind of originated from. And then I, how I charted the stitch to make it easier to work and a lot faster. And then the next portion is this table. Let's see now if I'm on if I have to move it. Uh, it's probably going I think I'll just leave it right there. Okay. So here is here's the table mat. I'm going to lift this up just a little bit so maybe you can see it. This is a nice little centerpiece table mat but you could make it into a table runner, runner by adding more of the house motifs on it. More of the little houses. You can add as many as you want. This is all I had time to get on this one and look it has the basket at the bottom 
so the houses sit in between or in the basket. There is the bottom edge of the uh, table mat, and here is the top edge with the basket stitch as well. And uh, a nice little border and some fringe on the side. Now, what could be prettier than that? And you saw in the pictures how pretty it looks with any type of table sitting, whether you want to dress it up or dress it down. It can be fancy or just plain homey. <laughs> so, what a pretty way to say, welcome home. And everyone can just sit down and enjoy the coming together at home. Alright, now let me show you, uh, uh, just for those who might want to know, and it's something of interest too. I'm going to see if you see it. I'm going to show you where I got the stitch from or a good place to get it. And then I'm going to give you the working formula for our little sample for this one. I'll give you the working formula. And at the end, you have to, at the end of the very video and tutorial, then I will give you a working formula for the table runner or mat. And I'm going to walk you through my little uh, measurements and uh, so that you can just start right out. If you decide, hey, Jay, I'd rather go ahead and work on the big one, you will have it all. I've, I've got it all ready for you. Hold on, and I'll be right back. You're going to be so surprised. All right, my friends, right here, I want to show you something. This is a little book I've had for years, and this is the one that I could find right away to show you where you can find this stitch. This stitch that I'm going to share with you is in public domain. It's in just about every stitch book. But the, the thing of it is, let me just show it to you and tell me what you see. This is why charts are so wonderful. When you have patterns, I'm going to just kind of hold this for a minute. When you have pattern, the written out word, there's no dimension to the, to the, to the words on the paper. They're just flat words on the paper. But when you have a chart, you do have some dimension so that you can kind of see outlines of things. So now I want to show you this. This stitch is called Gothic Lace. Here's the stitch right here. Gothic Lace. Here it is written. And you can find it. It's in public domain. It's in a lot of stitch books. But I want you to look. I'm going to see if I... Let me see how, let me see if, how close I can get this. See if I'm on first. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring it up now. All right, now watch. I'm going to bring it up real close. Tell me what you see. Can you see a house? <laughs> Look real close. There's a house. There's the roof. Comes down, down. Here's a second house. Here's a third house. Now you've probably seen this stitch in books. It's a beautiful lace stitch. It is called, most names, most play, uh when you see it, it's called Gothic Lace. You know, the other designers may give it other names, but uh, Gothic Lace. And this is where the house motif, far as I can see, far as me, learned when I first saw it years ago. It originated in this, from this stitch. And then if you look upside down, the houses go opposite. See, now here's a house with the roof, and it goes down. Here's a house, roof line. See? But just looking at it, if I had not maybe shared it with you, some people, some people may, may have seen it or noticed it, uh, you know, pop out, but a lot of people would not have seen that. And you see it. Gothic lace. And that's where, and this is, like I said, this is just one source. This is just the one I could find real quick just to show you. This is a book I've had for years. This is Super Stitch. Knitting by Karen Hemingway. I think I reviewed it years and years ago when I first came on YouTube. But anyway, I wanted to show you how stitches from the chart, how you can uh, you can see more things. It, it, it gives you an idea. It helps the stitches or the design to stand out. Now we want to get started, and I'm on. You'll see my chart. I sat down and recharted it because. Uh, in that book, the little houses would be kind of small. So I recharted it for my own design that you're going to work here. So this is my rendition or my version of that little house chart. 
It's Jay's Welcome Home. This is my working formula. For those that work with me, you know how simple I write it out. I don't write out a lot of uh, uh, rows anymore if I can help it. We're going to be using cotton. So my cotton is from the 90s. It's real old, thick. Some of that, what is it? Uh, peaches and cream and the other one. I can't even think of the other one. But it's real old and thick. And I used to buy it by the big skeins. So I normally would have to use a size, a US size 7 or maybe an 8 to knit with because it's so thick. <laughs> but the new cottons are much thinner and they have a shine or a sheen on them. So you, if you have the, if you want yours in the nicer, softer, prettier cotton, then just look on the, on the band and see what uh, needle size they recommend and work yours. There's not really a gauge uh, if you want it. You know, it just depends on how many houses you put to get the length that you want. We're going to work just one house on this sample. All right, now the house chart itself is 20 stitches plus 5. 20 stitches, and then at the end of the count, so if we were making three houses, I'd go, well, you know, I'd go 3 times 20, and then I'd add a plus 5. We're just working one house, so it's only 25. Then, uh, so let's go ahead to my working formula. You know, my formula is where it's been since I've been on for crochet and knitting. I draw one line. Now, on this line, the stitch book gave me the chart number or the number of stitches. So, I put that down here on the line, right in the middle. That's, what, that's the house. Now, we have to add anything else. This is where we come in and make and design. So I have a board of five here and a board of five here. If I add all of this up, I have a total of 35 stitches. So everyone, everywhere, whatever y'all, whatever cotton you want to make this. And uh, the, the one that I hang, had hanging up, you saw in the intro pictures, it was out of just plain number four weight yarn. Or you can use uh, Aran weight, you can use wool, you can use, use a wool blend. So it's just up to you. All right, just know if you're going to have to be washing it a lot, you know, you don't want something that's going to not, well, you know. But anyway, so I, you will cast on your 35 stitches, knit four rows, and just wait for me there. Now, how easy is that? For Jay's Welcome Home. <laughs> All right, there is, uh, take a screenshot of it. And go ahead and cast on and knit your four rows and I will see you everyone should be on the right side on the right side of the work and I'll be right back this is a chart that I simply charted from a book that I shared with you from the gothic lace all right I will see you once you reach your knit your four rows and we will get started well, off camera, we everyone was to knit your four rows. So I am back with my little sample. I am going to work the sample uh, in the same uh, exact same steps, using the same steps that I needed the uh, table uh, placemat. So uh, at the end, I'll give you a working formula uh, for those that might want to do the uh, placemat. But right now, this is just my small sample. Now, before we can get to our house chart, okay, we have to set in our basket section. And all this is, is a 5x5 five five rib pattern. Knit 5, purl 5. Knit 5, purl 5. So, it's easy to remember, easy to make, your, make my little formula, and easy to work too. So, let's get started. So, here is... Get it up. I'm on. I'm using a number eight, especially so that you can see. And as you can see, my cotton is very uh, thick, and you know, like I say, it's old. My cotton is from the 90s or so, so it's that uh, real old cotton. But this is just practice. So you're going to need a, a couple of markers. You need. Um, let's see what I've got here. I'll just take a couple of green markers. We just need to uh, set aside the border on each side. Now, when you look at your, uh, everybody had a working formula, right? And on that working formula, let's get started. After we've knit our four rows, 
we're going to knit five. So simply just knit your five. This is going to rec represent your first border. On one sample I added a lace border, but I thought I'm going to keep this one simple so that it will match the uh, table mat. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to place my first marker. Make sure I'm not in the camera. There's my first marker. Now, since this is the right side, we're going to start and end the five stitch ribbing. We're going to start with a knit. So I'm just simply going to knit five. Just really simple. Just knit five stitches. Just like that. In fact, this is so simple it kept putting me to sleep. One, two, three, four, five. Now, yarn in front. I'm going to purl five. Remember, everyone had 35 stitches, so this should work out to be just perfect starting with a knit and ending with knit. So now after I knit my first five, now I purl five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you put the yarn in back. Now knit five. I don't know what, but I thought, um, you know, we don't need a, uh, any more math to do this simple little rib stitch. Three, four, five. Yarn in front. Purl five. Oops. Make sure the yarn is in front for the purl stitch. That's all you have to remember. Put your yarn in front. Two, three, four, and five. Just double check your first row. Make sure everything is lined. Is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yarn in back. Now this should be knit five. One. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, we started with knit five and we want to end with knit five, then put a marker. Now you should have one, two, three, four, five stitches for your uh, border on this side. So, how easy is that? Oh, but look how much texture it gives. <laughs> so now that's the right side. We, we just finished. So when you turn, it's the wrong side. So you might want to mark this so that you'll know because we're going to have to count a few uh, rows to make sure we get enough. To, so I'm just going to stick a nice little bright marker right on this side to let me know this is the wrong side of uh, our basket stitch. So now on the wrong side, We generally, generally say uh, knit the knits and purl the purls. So we start with our five stitch border. I knit on every row. Okay, then I get up to the marker. Look and see, I want to knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches as they appear. So I can see right away my stitches on here, since this is the wrong side, the first five stitches are purl. So I bring my yarn in front, I slide my marker, now I'm going to purl those five stitches. Because I am, that's how they appear on the wrong side. Knit the knits, purl the purls as they appear when they're facing you. Now I can see the next five stitches, maybe not on my uh, work, but on yours you'll be able to see. There are five, one, two, three, four, five. So I need to put my yarn in back and I'm going to knit the next five, just like that. Okay, and then I always just check so you don't run past your number. One, two, three, four, five. Then I have the next is five purl stitches. Just that easy. Now I'm going to stop a minute and show you because we're going to con continue working 
this. All right, I am back and I am feeling much better. I'm telling you, as soon as we have a change in the weather, tea just doesn't do it for me. It has to be coffee all the way. <laughs> all right, now let me count it when I finish. On the other one, you can see I was going downhill. So now we ha we turn the work. Remember, after we knit six rows, and you can just count the little uh, one leg of the little stitch, and you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six. The six row six was on the wrong side. So when you turn, now I'm on the right side, and we're simply going to go right back into five by five ribbing, but we're just going to flip. The basket weave so I start with my border of five and where I had knit stitches now I'm gonna purl five one two three four five then where I had the purl stitches I will knit put the yarn in back knit one two three four five see you knit stitches now I'm gonna purl purl five one two three four five flip put the yarn in back now I'm gonna knit one two three four five and then I should end with the purl section again, yarn in front, and purl one, two, three, four, five, knit my border. That is what we're doing. So, of course, when I turn on the wrong side, you just, now the pattern's going to pop out and you can actually see what you're doing. You can tell right away, after the border, I knit, then purl, then knit, purl, knit, border. Really easy. A five by five little basket weave. You can use this anytime. You need to kind of, uh, you need some texture in one of your patterns for some reason. So what we're going to do is do that for another six rows. Every time we start over, it's, you start at the count of one. So we'll count up to six. Six will be on the wrong side. When you turn, you'll be on the right side. Stop and wait for me there. And uh, I'll tell you the next step. Really going to be easy because I want to get to the house. The good part. <laughs> All right, back in just a minute. All right, so after you finish doing the basket section and you had your six rows, okay, and you're on a right side row now. All right, all I need for you to do, everyone everywhere, is to knit four rows. You start here and you just knit across, okay, and then knit back, that's two, knit again, three, and knit one more time coming back and that's four. Knit four rows which will give you two garter ridges. See those two little ridges there? It's just for separation and to match the bottom edge. It sets your basket off and that pretty separates. From that point, all right, you do the four, uh, knit four rows. Now you're on the right side of the fabric. Remember, I got the wrong side marking. You should be able to tell now. But on the right side of the fabric, of course, you keep your borders. You knit on every row. But you will uh, knit on the front and then purl on the back, coming back. And you will uh, continue to do that. Knit across, purl back. Knit across, purl back. And it really, I think it needs to be at least an inch and a half. So right here from this from where we stop here to where we want to start our house. That's the next thing that's coming up. Go ahead and give me an inch and a half at least of plain stocking knit. We knit on the front and we purl back. See? Now, how pretty is that? Even before we even get to the house. <laughs> Doesn't that look pretty? Oh, bringing back my craft days. And we've already... Uh, checked our chart we've already prepared the chart so all we have to do now once you knit uh, your inch and a half be on the right side of course and if you knit an extra row or something it don't it doesn't matter just be on the right side and we will be ready to go all right back in just a moment woohoo now we're ready to start our beautiful little house for this really pretty Welcome home uh, table. Uh, well, these are like the little napkin that you can do on the side or whatever. And then I'm going to give you at the end, give you the actual measurements and all the, uh, you know, the measurements for the table, um, the table mat or centerpiece. All right. So 
I have done at least an inch and a half. You should be here. You should be on the right side. We are at row one down here. Now, I gave you a good screenshot so that you don't have to strain your eye to see this. But uh, So you just take a screenshot and print it. And, uh, you know, it gives you a clear enough copy that you can work from. Okay, so row one is the right side. And it's just really simple when you see how. Now, this is one that I charted to make my house larger and to make it a lot easier to knit without all the other extra stitches. And I share with you where I got my pattern from. Row one, it says, and I've already pre-counted, so that makes it easy. Look, it says knit seven. See, I pre-counted all those boxes. And remind you again, a, a empty box on the right side of the work means to knit an empty box or square on the wrong side coming back we simply purl easy chart just a little reminder so I'm, I start I do my board I slip the mark and I knit seven so one two three four five six and seven and I will double check because I'm doing all this stuff at one time two four six seven okay that brings us up to the first symbol and the first symbol is a yarn over then the next symbol leans to the left so I'm going to slip two stitches slip slip and then reach back and knit then a blank symbol blank box in the, in the center so I knit one now the next symbol leans to the right so I'm going to knit two stitches together just like this just knit two stitches together yarn over stop now I'm in the center of the chart because I put that pink line and I uh, share with you that just helps you to remember in case you lose your place You'll remember if you've crossed the pink line. So, it, but the pink line, after this yarn over right here, I have to knit one. See, there's an empty uh, square there. So I knit one in the pink line. Now I'm on the other side of the center. So yarn over again. The symbol leans to the left. So I'm gonna slip, slip, reach back and knit that stitch, just like that. Then there's a knit one. Then the symbol leans to the right, so there's knit two together. Yarn over, knit two. One, two. Stop, just for a minute. Okay, now, when you're doing the table mat, you're going to be repeating this because we have three houses. So you stop at the yellow, at the highlight, bring your eye back up and start again. That's the second house. Stop, bring your eye back up, and do it again for the third house. But on this little napkin or dishcloth or whatever you want to make it, we're just going to continue right off the chart. We're only doing one house. So I, after I knit, come yarn over, knit two. So I'm going to knit off one, two, three, four, five. So just knit off one, two, three, four, five. In other words, you just knit off the other side of the chart and then I get to my border mar marker I slide the marker and I knit my border now how easy is that <laughs> okay there's the border marker. okay this chart this little house I've got it uh, just set right in the middle of my little of my project so when I had the knit seven here you'll have knit seven here so see it's even on both sides and the house sits in the middle now listen when you turn the work which is this row right above it I just said that on the wrong side coming back we are have we've already established an empty box means to purl so I will do my little border stitch 
and then when I get to my mark I'll put the yarn in front and I'll purl all the stitches all the way till I get to the next marker yarning back and knit uh, the border stitches so now I will see you back on row three man is this cute is this easy <laughs> all right back in just a minute I'm back and surprise surprise <laughs> This is how easy and how cute this little pattern is. You're going to want to put this on other things. All right. Well, guess what? We just worked row one together, but if you look at the chart, row one, row three, row five, row seven, row nine, all right side rows, they are all exactly the same. See, you're setting up the little house. The pink kind of represents the center or the door of the house. See that? All right. So all you have to do now is to go to row three. You will knit seven, work the house just like we just worked it, and then knit off knit seven. You'd purl back. You'd go to five, knit seven, work the house in the center, and then knit seven off. Row seven, exactly the same thing. Knit seven, work the house, and knit seven. Pearl back and you will work row nine. Exactly. And that way you will have, it's the bottom of the house. So when I come, after you finish, and I'm going to finish off camera just to make it easy, we will be ready to put the roof on our house. <laughs> raise the roof, raise the roof. We'll be ready to raise the roof on our house just that quick. Now, in case you uh, get interrupted phone you know somebody calls you or you get up and you think you come back and go oh Jay all these rows are the same I done forgot which one where, where I where am I <laughs> all right go over here to the very first row of these yarn overs count and see how many yarn overs have you done that is showing up so say if you had one two yarn overs then you know you're ready you were getting ready to start on row five maybe you didn't move your little marker up or something and you think uh oh well just count the yarn overs Right on the on the fabric here. I don't have mine. Let's see. Well, I can do it on this one. See, you can come right here and count. Okay, I have, say if you had uh, two yarn overs. One, two. See that? Can you see where my finger, okay. Then you know then the next right side row, you'd be ready to have the third, or to add the third yarn over right there in the house. Now, how easy is that? All right, so now continue to work, and I will see you back on row, I guess that will be row 11, because that will be 10, yeah. So on row 11, we will be ready to add the roof of our house. <laughs> that was a surprise. How easy is this? Uh, it's kind of fun to do something just kind of, you know, kind of crafty and yet fast and easy. Like saying you can put this on anything. All right, be beautiful on a cute afghan for someone who's bought a new house or, you know, maybe moved and, and you can add a row of houses and then another basket row and then a row of houses and then a basket row, you know, or either vertical or horizontal. Wouldn't that be cute? All right, just giving you some ideas. All right, I will see you back on row 11. So work on building your house. Back in just a moment. Well, I have worked off camera. I hope you have too. So before we put the roof on our house, let's double check. Uh, make sure that you have everything that you uh, that you didn't miss any rows. Uh, you should have one, two, three, four, five yarn overs where you finish row nine and then you purl back on row ten. So just check your work. One, two, three, four, five. I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Five for me. One, two, three, four, five. So I know that I have completed uh, the first nine rows of the house. Now we simply want to jump or go up to, so I'm going to cover this section up just like that. It's kind of hard to find a way to get this tilted just right, but I hope I can... Hope you can see that, but uh, but you have um, 
screenshot where you download it, where you've printed it. Okay, so let's see if I can. If there's any more way to pull it in just a little bit more. Hold on. Let's just pull my little. This is my little homemade setup. <laughs> I have no idea if it's going to work. I just need it for it to work for a few minutes. Okay, should we get through with row 11? Okay, maybe that will work. Alright, like I say, you're working from your sheet you printed. Alright, row 11 starts. Look at it. Let's take a look at it. It simply starts just like we were working. I have pre-counted all the stitches. We're going to knit seven, yarn over, leans to the left, assemble, slip, slip, knit, and then there's a knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This symbol leans to the right, so that's a knit two together, yarn over, and then knit off the same number, knit off seven. Whatever you have on this side is going to be a duplicate on this side. So it's just really easy and a simple. So now I'm going to come up here. Of course, we have to start with knitting our border. Just like that. All right, so when I slide my marker, it shows I've finished the border. It says knit seven. So I'm going to do one. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then there is a simple yarn over. Pull some yarn up. Then I'm going to slip first, symbol, slip, slip, knit. And then I have pre counted right in the center, knit seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now knit two stitches together. Yarn over and knit seven. Whatever you have on this side will be over here. So I make sure you have that yarn over in place. And, and a lot of times I go ahead and count this to make sure I have it. Two, four, six, seven. Let's see. Two, four, six, seven. So I have that yarn over, the last yarn over. And then I knit one, two, three. Four, that's five, six, and seven. All right, now I slide the marker and knit that border just like that. So, it doesn't look like we've done anything yet. But as we go up, or as you go up, all right, that was row E11. You're going to purl back, and row uh, 13, you will knit 8, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit 5 in the center, knit 2 together, yarn over, knit off 8. Row 15, knit 9. See, I've already pre-counted all of it. Knit nine. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. You have three in the center. Knit one, two, three. Then leaning to the right, you're going to knit two stitches together. Yarn over. Knit off nine. Row 17. Knit ten. All the way across. It starts here. It's all the way across. That's ten. Yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. Knit the one in the center, the pink box. Knit two stitches together, leaning to the right, yarn over, and knit all ten. Alright, I'm going to continue to work real quick so that I can get this all on because I want to make sure I give you uh, the working formula 
for the actual table mat. So 19, I will see you at the end at row 19. All right, keep working. So now I work up to row 19 off camera because it's just just that simple and I wanted to make sure I had enough time on this tape on this video to get in the measurements and uh, just to be able to walk you through real quick of the table mat which is what which is what's so pretty but I just wouldn't have had time to do the whole mat so I did this little sample of a napkin or whatever you want to call it so row 19 the first thing I do I knit my border on every row slide the marker and it says knit 11 so I'm going to knit one let's see two three there's four there's five oops Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and I'll check it. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and one makes eleven. Okay, that's right up here. Row, row nineteen, the last pattern row. Then there is a yarn over. We're bringing the top of the house now. Very top of the roof. Yarn over. Now I want to slip two stitches. Just slip two. One, two. This is a double decrease. Now uh, knit one stitch. Stop. Reach back and pass both of those slip stitches. I do it one at a time. Over that stitch and off the needle. Just like that. So there's a point to the roof. Then I'm on this side. I do a yarn over and knit 11. So let's just do that. So I do a yarn over. Now I'm on knit 11. Or just knit off. Or knit to the next, to the border marker. Just want to go ahead and do this so that we can not only I but you can see what a cute little project this could be and like I say you could think of so many little things you could do if you were doing an African or something of course you don't have to use cotton you can use a beautiful wool blend depending on what part of the country they're in or you can use some type of just your plain acrylic or something that's especially if it's a young person you know you may have to uh, launder it but anything will work for this cute little pattern all right so now let me stop a minute and i'm gonna hold my house up before the camera so that you can see it now i've got some little things to show you how to kind of finish decorating the house we're going to put in, I'll show you how quick I just put my little um, little ties all around the house just to set it off. And you can do that. And then, like I said, the main thing is to give you a working formula for the actual table mat. The one that goes in the center. So, let me work a few more rows on this. Just so that I can come back and show you a couple little things on this sample that you will be able to do on your mat. All right looks really nice in fact so now what I'm really what I'm going to do is go ahead and start working I'll purl back which will make that row 20 I'll purl back then I'm gonna go back I'm over I'm, I'm gonna work in reverse so now I'm gonna go down remember we knit like about two and a half uh, excuse me an inch and a half down here well I need an inch and a half up here of stockinette knit on the front purl on the back knit on the front Pearl on the back until you have a, at least an inch and a half just like we put here at the bottom of the house. So I need that here. Then you will knit four rows to get this little uh, two, two row garter stitch. You have to knit four rows. 
and then you would go right back into your basket just like you were doing you'd start on the right side and you'd um, knit after your border you knit five purl five knit five purl five knit five on the reverse you you'd uh, uh, you know knit the knits and purl the pearls as they appear you would do exactly the same thing but in revert you do it what you did down here you do up here all right but let me knit a few uh, rows because I want to show you something uh, and show you how to do the little string ties just for those and then I'll give you the working formula for the table for the centerpiece the table centerpiece or the table mat all right back in just a minute so now real quick let me show you this is what I wanted to bring to you though I found just some little things to kind of help make your uh, nice little napkin or when you, when I show you the table mat just to go over it again but right here main thing I wanted to share with you right here at the top of the house where we put in that uh, double decrease it seems like it won't it's like a weak point or you see how it pulls open the the stitches there can you see how it pulls open where those that yarn over and this yarn over all right I want you to take a needle with the same yarn turn it on the wrong side and then I want you to go ahead and take a couple of stitches I'm gonna put it in here I can leave a tail to weave in and then go across that little not not across the center of that eyelet stitch not across the hole but near the top like right up here go across the top and see if you can pull that in I didn't get it so I'm gonna go across and get pick up another stitch see if you can just pull and catch that the top of that stitch now I'll show it to you let me go ahead and do the other one then go to the next one the one right next to it at the top and I'm just going to go across the top and catch a couple of stitches to make sure that it keeps that hole from and then you can weave it in on each side I'm gonna go ahead and cut it weave it in and that may not be okay now let me turn it over and by me doing that now there is no weak area at the top of my little house at the top of the roof because I took a piece of yarn and a needle and just kind of reinforce the top of each of those little holes those the, those eyelet stitches just to make sure they were secure now of course if you want the little um I I just just to add a little more decoration I took the same needle and the same yarn and I just ran it up under a couple of stitches pulled it through I did a square knot or a very simple knot I did it once I tied it once then I tied it again if you're going to do heavy uh, laundering on this you might can drop some um, you know the kind of glue they use when they uh, quilt there's fabric a little drop of fabric glue in that knot if you want to then I cut then I cut it short so that it sticks up it makes the little tie and you just kind of okay let me do a couple while I'm just sitting here then I you know I don't want them in a straight line or anything I kind of want them up and down or whatever at random so one tie the knot twice at least and then don't cut it too close but and they just it's just like quilting like you're just kind of and I'm gonna go over here and match I have one on that corner so I'm, I'm gonna go over here kind of put one here in this corner that looks good and all I did was just take some take the same yarn 
the cotton and then I'm going to work it tie it cut it so they kind of stick up another good place to put these is right here up under right here at the house see here's kind of like the door and then here's the uh, side of the house or one side of the house I'm going to stick one right here let me get my yarn just to add something to the house and pull it up so you can see what I'm doing I hope I'm not too far away I can put in just a little bit more and I'm just going to do a double tie knot right there on one side at the bottom of the house tie it then cut it then I'm going to do one on this side not in not at the door the door is in the center that's where that little between those um, but I'm gonna come right over here and I'm going to just run that through tie it twice it's bringing your inner crafting out <laughs> and so now I have that at the bottom of my house the one at the top is not right at the point I should I could have moved it up and I could have left a little longer that's a little short so you can always clip it and take it and redo it if it's a little short then all you have to do is you know put more yarn put more yarn in your needle and then you can kind of stagger some here and there or over in these two corners and stagger it there it's just a homey look you'll take this to your ironing board or have you since this is very simple cotton I'm gonna turn it always on the wrong side I am going to steam it and hand press then I can weave in these little ends while I, uh, while I took care of those two um, kind of reinforce those two holes at the top but you like to steam, shh, hand press. Don't do too much hand press. You know, don't rub, do too much to lose your a basket weave. It's mainly right in here. And you will have a really pretty, of course, you can add fringe on each end if you like. But let me real quick, because I want to get this on this video so that we can get it up. I'm going to give you my working formula. This is Jay's Welcome Home Table Mat. I use a number, you can use, well it depends on your yarn. You can use cotton, you can use any yarn as I've, you know, shared as you've seen in my pictures. But I picked either a number 7 or a number, number 8 needle for me. And I wind up working the number 8. It was easier on my hands. Alright, the house chart. The stitch count is 20 stitches plus 5. So I took 20 times 3 because I have 3 houses on my mat that I'll show you. 3 times 20 is 60 plus 5, so 65. I come down and draw my line as I always do. This is my working formula. Alright, on each side I have a border of 5. Here's my B stands for border. I put 5 and 5. Right here are EX, extra extra stitches that I need to kind of balance off this ch this uh, chart so I put another five extra over here another five then I bring the chart number down right here 65 now if I add all of this up 65 and 10 is 75 and 10 over here 85 stitches to cast on I knit my four rows and guess what you are just at the bottom where we started uh, on the smaller sample but you're gonna have three houses now get a 
good screenshot of that. Now I'm going to bring in real quick the table mat so that you can see it in real time. Again, I took pictures, but I wanted you to see it in real time real quick. And let me kind of just let's see how it looks. If I can get it halfway, I'm going to back way out. Hold on. Hey, Bird. Let's see if Bird can help me get it straight there. Okay. Real quick, let me kind of walk you through it. Just to remind you, we knit four rows at the very bottom. Okay, you just saw that cast on. This would be 85 stitches. This is 85 stitches. Okay, then we worked the basket. I worked it out so that it would work out perfect. That's why I needed 85 and the extra five stitches. You will start here with the knit purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and do that for about six rows. Then you will flip it, and then the next, when you start again on the right side, but you'd be purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, all the way across. Then you want to knit four rows. We knitted an extra four rows. Once we finish the basket segment, we knit it four rows right there. You'll all get, you'll get two garter ridges. It takes four rows to make two ridges. So I did my four rows. Then I did my inch and a half or two inches if you know if you want a wider uh, table mat. You can do two inches here to you know just two inches before we can set our house. All right or inch and a half. We work the house just following the Following our working formula, here is, here is a border, a five, then there is five here. Then you're going to put a marker to represent the five uh, where the chart starts. And then you will work the chart just like we worked the small sample. Okay. And you work the whole house up once you get done with the top of the house. Okay, then you're going to work an extra whatever you worked here, an inch and a half or two inches. I think I maybe had two inches on this one. Two inches so that it will be wide enough for my the center of my table. Two inches, then I knit four rows so that I'll have those garter ridges. Then I did the basket again. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl for six rows. Flip it, then purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit across. And to end it, just like I started, I knit four rows, and on the fourth row, you will be on the wrong side, and I bound off on the wrong side, but using the knit stitch. That's everything in a nutshell, and the beautiful chart, a nice table mat. As you saw how I used it on my table in the pictures, how pretty it is. Then I went back and added all these little... Uh, ties. It was just fun. I started up in these corners and you know just kind of up and down up and kind of random like and put some at the bottom of the house too and in the corners. Now how cute is that? And I want to thank you for coming and joining me and just to say welcome home. <laughs> Take care and uh I will, I will see you soon. This is Jay. This is Jay's Knit and Pearl Jam Fall Festival 2023. Bye-bye.